violent yeah. and dangerous. I said to myself, like, okay, so if you're going to do martial art, why would I do the most brutal one? You know, like extremists, like I'm an extremist. Also, I'm, I'm using that extremism in, in the, uh, the way I, my passion for, for animals and my passion for veganism, like my activism, the way I want to, like for me, like the way I speak about this, about veganism to my friends and people that I meet, and I can be very intense. The psychology of a champion mindset and to overcome obstacles and pain and fear in whatever it is, yeah. yours is fighting. Yeah. But it's what you learn along the way that's interesting for everyone. Again, I guess I would say it was more like diet, right, at mm -hmm. first. But not long after that, I, I think I saw your videos and I saw a lot of, uh, I researched a lot of stuff and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, I'm already on the good side of history and right I'm already on the good side for my health. What you're doing is way bigger than, than you thought. It's not just for, uh, you know, for, you, for your veins and my arteries. And you actually like, on, uh, you're doing it, an ethical choice and a very good thing for humanity. I'm like, wow, and, and the animal kingdom, I'm like, this is, this is what I need to do. We tend to, to put down this, this atrocious thing. I, I, like I said, I've never been to a slaughterhouse yet, but we can understand the atrocities that are happening there. So for me, it, it's, it's mass murder on the daily. You put yourself on the victim's perspective. Well, it's, 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 a, it's a genocide. So here we got Dave LaDuke here. Dave LaDuke, how you going, my brother? Good one. We're spending some time with Dave LaDuke. Dave LaDuke's a <laughs> Burmese bare knuckle fighting champion. I didn't really know much about the sport, but I've been looking into it and it is the most brutal sport like on earth. It is, there's nothing really more violent that's legal on earth, really. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Uh, it's the last remaining sport where you can do headbutts that it's legal. And yeah. uh, it makes it illegal in most countries, but it makes it a very uh, interesting sport. Yeah, but why would I be talking to like a bare knuckle True. fighter? You're a vegan as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You're a vegan. Absolutely. But we're going to get to that, but like, uh, um, get to your transformation and stuff. But it's just very interesting to have, you know, someone in, involved with uh, fighting sports who's also a vegan mm -hmm. and how that transition happened. Yeah, there's not that many. There's not, there, many there's not that many. What? Why? Why do you think? I think there's this misconception again, there's stigma that like you need to be, you need to eat animal, dead, dead animal flesh to be strong. Uh, you know, like I was raised that way. I was raised with like those... No, uh, uh, commercial like quarter pounds, and you need to eat meat to be strong and barbecue, and the, it gives that image that you, you need that to be strong. And uh, I guess we'll talk about this. This there's a the click in my mind that like, you know, first of all, the best thing I can do for my health is avoid this and re remove it completely. And uh, but also the best, the biggest strength is you know to 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 take care of the innocent ones, not yeah. to oppress them and to enslave them and to to kill them. I think this is the biggest sign of. Uh, of, of strength I think a man can do is to, to be protective of the, of the the weaker ones. So in fighting sports particularly, it's going to attract a certain type of person, isn't it? Like yeah. someone who's, there's usually an ego battle in the ring. True. So do you think that they're the type of people who are less likely to take animal issues seriously? Or? Very good question. I think it, I think, I, I don't speak for all the vegans, but I think it's, it takes a certain amount of uh, realization and compassion and uh, like you said there's a lot of ego in fighting you have to uh, actually I think in order to go to fighting you have to, to have some kind of childhood traumas and have some uh, some yeah some traumas like you mm -hmm. you want to show like for me personally I wanted to to show myself because I was told by everybody growing up that I was uh, tall and slender and slim I thought like I was I was under the impression like oh, you're I, I was told I was weak so I wanted to show, I guess, everybody, society and myself that like, look, it doesn't matter my body type, I can f*** you up. <laughs> you know, but You're segueing perfectly into how you grew up. Mm -hmm. So where did you grow up? Grew up in, in a small town in Gatineau, Quebec. It's a French province in Canada. So Canada is bilingual, but there's only one province that is French. Uh, you know, lumberjacks back in the days. And, and uh, yeah, that's my uh, the French town. So my first language is French. So what was growing up like in this small, is it like a small village? Yeah, I mean, not village, like, you know, 30, 300,000 people. So in town. Yeah, like town. Yeah, town. Yeah, yeah. So what's it like growing up there and what are your parents like? Uh, great, great childhood, I believe. Uh, you know, didn't miss of anything. My parents were, were, were great. Um, I was, I think I was having some, some uh, I, I wanted more to life. I was not like, I was a kind of nomad in my mind. So I ended up being a nomad and traveling. Everything. I didn't like to be... I didn't like to be sedentary, so I wanted to move. So the big element was I got kicked out of the house at uh, 17, 18 years old, which, which was the, the most traumatizing event in my life. 
didn't have any money. I was basically left in the cold. It was minus 30 degrees Celsius at the time, middle of the winter in Quebec. It's cold. And uh, I remember like calling my friends. They picked me up. I had a bag with uh, almonds. I guess I was uh, was vegan for that period of my life at the time. I had a sack of almonds. <laughs> for survival. <laughs> exactly. Vegan for survival. <laughs> exactly. And then I put some crab dinners and some canned goods in the snow so I can come back the next day to pick up some food because I like, what do I eat otherwise? So it was a bit, a bit, a bit hard. And also like the feeling of, obviously there was, it's a deep issue, but the feeling of not being loved, I believe like, you know, you have to leave the house. Mm -hmm. So does that mean like you don't love me? You know, does that mean, so it was a very- Why did you life. have to leave the house? What, what happened? I had a big fight with my parent, my dad, a big, big fight with my dad, uh, not physically. It did, that's the thing, before it became physical, he said like, you have to leave. So um, I'm like, okay, well, I'm leaving. So I, again, didn't have anything to my name and I just, I just left. Uh, it was a very transformative time. So I, and that's the moment I started going full on into martial art. I was never, uh, I think, prone to do drugs or do, you know, trouble. I was, I was a, good, a good kid, but I, pro I think it saved my life in a way that it made me a better man, you know? Yeah. It made me uh, the guy that I am. I went, all my energy was focused onto, you know, fighting and punching back. Otherwise, I, maybe I would have just, you know, starting fights at the club all the time, you know, maybe become, go, and then police gets involved. I don't know what I would have ended up if I didn't find martial arts at that time. So you, you get, you leave your house, mm -hmm. kind of get kicked out-ish from your I house. Know, big time, like kicked you're out. leaving. <laughs> out, you're out in the snow, you're fending for yourself. And what do you mean you found martial arts? A friend of mine was training and he said like, why don't you come join a class? So I joined a class and uh, I think I had like $500 to my name and I paid for the for the year. Like I said, okay, I just like, I'm committed. Like there is no way out. So I paid and the rest is history. So found, I found martial art and I found a way, I found a mentor uh, to, to uh, Sifu Pat, my, my coach who taught me everything I know about martial arts. What type of martial arts was it? Uh, it was a Kung Fu school. And the, like the kickboxing aspect of Kung Fu is called Sanda. It's a Chinese martial art from China. And uh, yeah, I started training this, but I love the, uh, I love also the ground, like grappling. Yeah. So we need to grapple. Soon. Yeah, yeah. No, not, not just now because I'm, <laughs> I've got an injury, but I will, I will okay. smash you later. Right? Perfect. perfect. Yeah. So you got the perfect thing that you would need as a lost youth. It's you have, feeling. you have uh, some, a social setting, you know, you have a, a leader or a mentor mm -hmm. and you have something to do and to focus on because I didn't have any of those things and you know where I sure. ended up in the, yeah. on drugs and gangs and in prison. So that, and there are gangs in Canada. It is, yeah. So you, and, and drugs and all yeah. that stuff. And you need a good leader, right? Not yeah. any leader. So no. you can find bad mentors as well, right? Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and I found uh, mentors, male figures in, in gangs and things like that True. that you found in the martial arts setting and that must have given you good mental training as well as physical, yeah? Yeah, yeah for sure. Like it's not only martial arts. Like that's the thing, coaches like, uh, leaders in, in martial arts schools, they, they kind of, you know, they do late night talks. So it's, it becomes more than fighting. Yeah, like give you like a second kind of family sort yeah. of thing, yeah? The time that I needed it, you know. So you, you're learning martial arts. How dedicated are you at this point? So I'm, I'm training pretty hard. Uh, I don't have a, a goal yet um, until my coach talks about Black Belt magazine. And it's like a famous magazine in, in the world. And uh, he talks about Burmese fighting. So I see this, I'm like, wow, Burmese fighting. And again, that's, it's a very, I have goosebumps because it's a good question. I always, at that time, the reason why I got into a fight is because I was getting, I was speaking a lot at school. I was a black sheep. I was always being different. I, I liked, I was a bit of a troublemaker, a good, funny troublemaker. Co professors liked me, but still I was talking a lot and, you know, mm -hmm. making trouble. Um, I was having good grades because I was just brilliant. But that, <laughs> no, but, of course, yeah. But um, yeah, so then just it leads up to the fact that I like Burmese fighting, Burmese barnacle cool fighting, you know, headbutts allowed. It's very, very weird and very um, unorthodox, you know. It's because I, I found that it was the black sheep of martial art. It was different. It was, out, it was standing out. I always wanted to stand out. The reason why I didn't want to stay to Canada as well, I wanted to move is because I, I wanted to move out, I wanted to stand out. So I, can, I guess I would consider I was a, a little bit of a, I was lost, you know, yeah. in a way. And I like, I like um, different things. So yeah. I, I fell in love with Burmese fighting when, as soon as I, I heard about this. So it's not just <laughs> different. It's not just like something not many people do. It's also incredibly violent yeah. and dangerous. I said to myself like, okay, so if you're gonna do martial art, why when I do the most brutal one, you know, like extremists, like I'm an, an extremist. Also, I'm, I'm using that extremism in, in the, 
the way I, my passion for, for animals and my passion for veganism, like my activism, the way I want to, like for me, like the way I speak about this, about veganism to my friends and people that I meet, I can, I can be very intense, like, you know, so my, I'm a very extremist guy. Yeah, we're yeah. very similar, actually. We have intense <laughs> yes, personalities. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I, I mean, life is short, so why not live it to the fullest? Intensity, you know? exactly. Yeah. So you, you're at this uh, martial arts school. Mm -hmm. When do you first start training for that specific sport? Yeah. So in a way, to resume what you just said, I like pain, I think. <laughs> I was, I was, because I was in, probably in pain. Actually, you make me realize a lot of things. Right? I was in pain inside of me, right? Like you know, being kicked out and all these things. And also just pain of like, who am I, what do I want to be, where I want to go. So, and I think I just, I don't like, I don't mind getting, I didn't mind getting, you know, hit and hurt. Uh, it, maybe it was a kind of a, uh, like a meditation for me. I don't know, you know what I mean? Well, like therapeutic. A, a therapeutic. You, you were know? traumatized. Yeah. And, uh, it kind of, and it's still to this day, I don't mind it. Like, I don't mind getting, you, you would, you know, you yeah, punch I noticed, right I <laughs> We train a lot, by the way, off We've been doing a bit of training together and he's quite rough, let's just face it. I think, there's two Dave, bro. There's two Dave. I think you notice, like, there's the guy in the ring and there's yeah. the guy in life. And I don't know. It's I guess it's weird, but yeah, I I, uh, I like to be as kind as I can and as mm. as good as I can outside of the ring. And and I mean business when I'm in the ring. You yeah, know? Yeah. And that's why, in, in a way, it, for people at home, it kind of explains Burmese martial art to the best because they have a quote. It's like, be as humble as a lamb outside and like as brutal as a, a warrior. You know, the biggest fearless warrior in the ring. Mm. And I. I felt I fell in love with that culture when I went to Myanmar, you know. So uh, I relate to them very much on that aspect, like less than I relate, to be honest, to to my uh, Canadian culture, which that's more like the lack of culture in a way. We kind of lost it over the years. Mm -hmm. It's like fighting is not is not present in Canada as much. It's very um, niche in, in Myanmar. It's 55 million people and it's their religion like grandmothers kids uh, they all go to the stadium and they cheer like uh, it's it's intense it's and I like that and but it's outside the ring it's I like their brothers you know we're friends and everybody's kind so it's interesting it's, I'll bring you into Myanmar one day uh, it's a very interesting place and actually you put it on the map for me because mm -hmm. I didn't know about I know about Thailand I yeah. know about Vietnam I know about the surrounding areas yeah. but Burma, Myanmar, I didn't really know until you started posting about it. It's like it. in the shadow of, of the world for, for like uh, like 100 years or something because of you know, uh, colonization and uh, uh, mil uh, economic sanctions around the world. It was a military coup as well, so it was like you cannot enter, it was very hard to enter. And I kind of, I kinda, my, my career flourished at the perfect time because Myanmar opened to the world when uh, I was ready to, to, to uh, you know, I was like in, in my prime. So, uh, yeah, I guess we're, we're a bit in advance. Of, like, that was in 2016, like, when okay. I first went to, 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 to Myanmar. So, so, obviously, this style of fighting, yeah. there's no gloves in that. But when yeah. you're training, because I want to know how you, got, <laughs> how you got to the point where you were jumping in the ring for okay. the first fight. Okay. Like, what is the, the work up? Okay. Like, how do, you get, how do you prepare for a fight with bare knuckles? Yeah. With, with gloves and sparring and things like this. Like, okay. what, explain your training yeah. up to this point in your first fight. I think we spoke about this, like, you know, do you train with no gloves? Yeah, I train with gloves because I want to I want to protect, the, I call it the weapons, right? I want to protect the weapons for the fight. You don't want to injure, like, your blade on a rock or something before the fight. It's going to be blunt, right? So you want to, I don't want any injuries when I go into the fight. So I train, I'm very, people don't think that because they see me headbutting watermelons and they, they see me do a bunch of crazy stuff hitting my neck. They think like, okay, he's a, he's a lunatic. He, he probably can't speak. He's a French weirdo. Yes, it's true. But uh, I, I'm very cautious in training. I, I'm all about longevity. I want to have. You know, I just have my son. I want to be. I, I think it's something that's uh, very uh, underappreciated. I, I train very carefully, and now I'm in a ring. Let's go, Allah. But it's you know the ring it's is very interesting. Uh, it's like a dichotomy here, okay, a me. contradiction. It's like you're very careful yeah. outside the ring, and you sure. do one of the most dangerous, yeah. brutal sports in the world. Good point. Inside the ring. Which is, uh, it's good that you have that balance. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, it would be kind of counterintuitive. Like, I mean, if I'm going crazy in training and, and killing myself, you know, like, yeah. Because like, a lot of guys actually, like, they go for sparring, we call it, like, full, full, uh, like, very aggressive sparring. Yeah. I am against that. I want to, I don't want to get knocked out and I don't want to, I don't want to knock out my, my uh, training partners as well because they don't want to spar with me if I just knock them out all the time. So I, tr I try to be, like, technical. And uh, my coach taught me something called the warrior uh, cry. The warrior cry is like, 
that brings that makes me able. I spoke. I told you about this. Like to be able to bring the the, the call it the demon out or the, the energy out at the right time. So you don't want. You're not getting paid in training. You're not. You're not. Uh, you're not trying to kill your opponent right now. The goal is to keep that energy and channel it for the ring. So I, I basically do a a big scream before the fight and. Uh, it really brings all my energy when I need it. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can people learn to apply that switch like outside of life, but not in a in a fighting way? Mm -hmm. You know, when they need it, when they're when they're feeling like tired, down, burnt out. You know, they mm -hmm. need to put they put in extra work. They need to. I think I think Tony Robbins spoke about the trigger. He's like, I think he was saying I, I hit my chest before before doing a speech. Like there's some kind of triggers. I, I'm sure it's doable. Yeah. I'm sure it's doable for the fighting aspect. My coach always said, you know. You cannot, not everybody can be a fighter. It's not into everybody. You yeah. can teach, you know, languages, you can teach computer skills and stuff like that, but like fighting, like you can know all the, all the techniques, but then you get one shot in the face, you're like, I don't yeah. want to do this anymore. Well, but I, I don't want to yeah. get a, and my nose broken. Like, you know, this, it's, it's an interesting, uh, I think you need to have some kind of trauma inside. Yeah. I really believe like, you know, you have, you have to want to prove it either to yourself or to somebody else. You, you want, you need to be, in a certain space in your mind to want to be, to go inside willingly against somebody that wants to hurt you, again, trained uh, at least again, it's still, it's still very odd, you know, it's still very interesting. So for me, fighting does not define me. I mean, I'm a fighter in life, I'm a fighter inside, outside and outside the ring, but like fighting professionally is just one part of, of, of me, who I am, you know, like I, I do way, uh, way more things in my life. Yeah, it's just a... Uh... It, it's it, what it, brought me. It's brought me to the world. Like it, that's what makes me made me popular. But I, I want to use that channel and of to course for other things. Of course, it's just a for me the psychology of a champion mindset and to overcome obstacles and pain and fear in whatever it is. Right, yeah. yours is fighting. Yeah. But it's what you learn along the way that's interesting for everyone. Like most people watching this aren't fighters. I'm not a fighter anymore, but it's... But you're I'm, a fighter in life. Exactly. Yeah. Like there's things I don't want to do. Like True. I don't want to always go out and uh, do uncomfortable activism and go up against farmers and there's people who are upset with me, da, 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 da. But if I have something that I can take from your mindset yeah. that can help shield me for the fight of life, then that's something that everyone can take. I think with. you a good point. I think the, the the main takeaway is like if you need to do something and you, your brain you 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 say okay this is something I need to be doing. Don't overthinking. Just do it. So basically, like I knew that at that time I need to go in that ring to make some money for me and my wife to to be to, to survive. Mm -hmm. So like there was no question. Like that's what I'm able bodied to. That was mm -hmm. that's what I was doing. I was not doing any other thing in my life. So at that time I need to go fight against this killer from Myanmar. Do it, you know, and uh, don't look back. So for you, for example, I need to go uh, to that farm and, you know, scary. We just have to do it. Identify the thing you need to do and don't look back. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. So tell us about your prison fight. <laughs> That's pretty what crazy, dude. Like I'm telling you, you weren't a prisoner. Yeah. And you went into a prison yeah. to fight a prisoner. Yeah, crazy you know, times. I've been to prison, and prison is filled with some pretty tough people. Prisons usually have some of the toughest people from yeah. that country within yeah. the prison. You yeah. know, and uh, yeah. so they're they're pretty can be pretty scary places. Yeah. Tell tell us how how this happened. Why <laughs> did you go into a prison to yeah. have a fight? Well, you imagine like you know. Uh, a maximum security security prison in Thailand is also like not the same as like a prison in Canada or Australia, right? Yeah. It's, it's 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 intense, and um, so similar to the same line as like I wanted to be different, I wanted to do something different. Everybody was doing the same the same fights, the same. They're almost always everybody was going to the same goals, and then I saw a prison fight. I saw a documentary on Vice. Uh, I said, okay. Again, this is what I want to do. This is different. This is crazy. Let's go. Let's live to the fullest. And but I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to get there. So I really dig deep, and I found like it was an Estonian uh, promoter uh, with a, an Iranian guy, and I started like just tracking them down online, and uh, finally got a hold of them. After winning some fights, I was able to uh, to get a fight. They said, "Okay, we'll, we'll get you in the we'll get you into prison." It almost didn't happen because they, you know, but I, I basically said like, I'm coming, I don't care, you don't even have to pay me. So I was the only guy not paid. <laughs> All the, the prisoners were paid, I wasn't even paid. That's you do it for the, yeah, for I the feeling. I knew that this was going to put me on the map, it's going to bring me life, like, li lifetime memories, you know. 
and uh, I wanted to fight in the prison. So why are they having fights in prisons? Like, what's it's, going- yeah, good question. It's a rehabilitation program with the Thai Department of Corrections. And they, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's really cool. They think that like this is national sport. It will help rehabilitation of the fighters. So in order to be in the in the the program, you need to be you know a fighter. You know, some a lot of guys are fighters, like legit killers. But uh, they did some mistakes. Uh, you know, some guy did some. I think he raped. Uh, and a guy murdered a guy because he touched his his girlfriend. He was an actual lumpini. It was a big stadium in in Thailand. He was a. Uh, a good fighter, but he killed somebody with a knife because he was hitting on his girlfriend. All this to say, like, I fought a guy who was a, a drug dealer um, for the methamphetamine, and uh, you had, like, 13 years. And, like, again, if they win, they get sentence reduction. So wow. if you have good behavior, you're, you're, not, you're avoiding drugs, you're, you're training, you're daily, you know, you're, you basically train more than the guys outside the prison. Like, I, I'm sure you train more than me. Like, I train once a day, and he trains two times a day. Like, he, they were like, because again, if they win, they get sentence reduction. So they really want to win. <laughs> <laughs> they want to win way more than you do. So that's a, it's a much more dangerous fight yeah. for you. Yeah, it was, yeah. And, and the name of the event was Prison Fight, Fight for Freedom. Literally, Fight for Freedom. So you're the, who they have to beat. Yeah. And then Bangkok Post, like a bunch of, like I think CNN, they came and they said like, so do you want to, are you like, you want to let him win? I'm like, hell no. Like, it's also, you know, it's an interesting concept. Because like, first of all, I have my career to build, but he wants his freedom. I'm, I, it's like, what do you do? I'm not going to give him for free. Like, you know, f- fight me. And uh yeah, it's a very, very intriguing concept. And uh, so, how did the fight okay. go? Like, let's yeah. t- let's yeah. go to the fight. <laughs> so we go there. I was my, I mean, my Turkish friend actually, my Turkish friend that lives here now. Um, we go inside the prison. It's like metal doors. Uh, so again, we go there. They they, give, they take our phones. I'm like, okay, so I have no way of talking to anybody if something hits, something happens. We go into the metal doors. We go inside. Now I'm inside the prison yard with no phone, with my Turkish friend, and like about 500 prisoners staring at us. There's one guard with us, with a, with a, with a, a, a stick. <laughs> yeah, so we go there, and there's a ring set up in the middle of the, of the yard with three lazy boys in front of the thing, and that's where the prison like, director is going to sit watching the fights. It's really like a movie, and uh, it's an outdoor like outdoor yard, obviously. So like it's the first time I was gonna fight out, out outdoors. Usually it's inside a stadium, right? So it's pretty cool to fight during the day. Usually it's a nighttime fights, and then we go and we start getting ready. There's a bunch of uh, there's only media allowed, no no spectators allowed inside the prison. So uh, I see my my opponent getting ready there. Uh, we're getting ready to the same place, and now the the event starts. There's a guy singing Backstreet Boys. Yeah. What? Yes. <laughs> How random. Yeah, 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 In a yeah. prison. <laughs> He's singing, you are my fire. You're my only desire. desire. You are my fire. So I'm like, wow. I, what the f***? We start getting ready. And uh, all the other guys, they lose. They get, they get either knocked out or something happens. And it's very, very... Uh, yeah. They so all, all the other contenders... Yeah are losing yeah. because they're, they're really trying to beat them. And yeah, and, and they're really, they're really like it was an Iranian, another Canadian, Uzbekistan, who's my friend, another Iranian. So it was all foreigners fighting against inmates in Thailand. And these guys are basically, uh, again, t- Lumpini is like the major league of, of Thailand Muay Thai. So these guys are solid fighters. They just yeah. they, they did some mistakes in their, in their, yeah, you know, yeah, their yeah. life. And um, I actually fight uh, this guy. He, he gave me a good, a good fight. And he ended up surviving the, the, the entire fight, but I, I cut him so bad. He was, uh, it was blood everywhere, all his blood. And uh, yeah, I won the fight. I know he got, he got a, a really a, an accolade from the prison, the prison warden afterwards, even though like I dominated and I won, he got, he got respect from this. Was it elbows that got him? Yeah, so exactly. I was doing up elbows to the top of his head. <laughs> so, and I, I cut him everywhere on, on uh, he had like, I think 50 laceration on his head. 
uh, and he was like, I had a bag of ice afterwards after the fight. I looked like I was Carrie in the movie. Wow. Know, when, she, when she gets dropped, about a bucket of blood on her, on her body. It was. Uh, well, that's what you had to do to yeah. win. But again, it's all respect, you know, like I identify, we give each other a hug, yeah. it's interesting. Uh, martial art is something that we cannot understand. I was, I was explaining that to my wife the other day. You cannot understand it until you actually do it. Like you, you, you share that, that moment in time with somebody. And, you know, again, the, the word is consent. We're both consensual. Yeah, because <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I see uh, in the ring when you're doing the, uh, the bare knuckle Burmese box, there's always yeah. this, you bow with yeah. each other, there's always this deep level of respect afterwards. Yeah. And it's an interesting dynamic because you're yeah. spending most of the time trying, trying to, to hurt each other. Like, really yeah. hurt each other, like, yeah. because there's this element of a bare knuckle Burmese boxing that people yeah. don't talk much about that is that you have to knock them out <laughs> to win. Yeah. If you don't knock, because I was watching your yeah. fights and I was like, why are they always draw? Why, yeah. why is it always yeah. a draw? Yeah. You know, but you have to a uh, technical knockout or knockout to, yeah. to win. Or doctor stoppage, like a lot of blood. But again, that's very that's very uh, unlikely because most of the most of the fighters are going to just pretend they fight and just they don't care about uh, about blood. But yeah, it's it's uh, usually in most fights, right? It's uh, there's judges at the end of the fight that decides if it's a decision or yeah. or, or, or whatever. But in Letway, there's no there's no judges. Uh, traditional Letway, it's KO to win, and not only just KO to win, but two KOs, which is very hard to even for me to grasp. Um, so I not one of my uh, my most famous fights. I knocked out my uh, my opponent, my nemesis in the first round. He was out for about you know 40 seconds cold. They reanimated him. They revived him. His coach were biting his ears. They were pulling his hair, putting cold ice on his body. After a minute, he woke up, and then he had another minute to get get back to his senses, and we resumed the fight. He's the one of the only the guy, this guy Tuntun Min. He's the only guy that I know of that. Uh, also got knocked out in the previous fights and back in the days, but came back and won the fight. Wow. So usually in Litwick, this rule, there's, there's arguments that it should be removed because usually if you get knocked out, it's very hard to win again. You know, again. Uh, but he, it happened. It happens. Uh, in yeah. the same fight, he was knocked out and he came back yes. in the same fight and won. Yeah. In our fight, he got knocked out, but he, we basically, he, he finished the fight, as, we finished as a draw. Yeah. But, you know, I won. Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's interesting because you see the other person, yeah. you're like, you definitely won. Yeah. We haven't really discussed yeah. that, your, your career. Yeah, true. So how long were you doing this for, fighting for, like, in the ring? So I trained for about 10 years, but after prison fight, that's what really, that was, that, that was Muay Thai, right? Muay Thai Muay is Thai. with gloves yeah. and no headbutts allowed. And that's from Thailand, the neighboring country of Myanmar. But at that time already, we forgot to say that, I already had a goal in my mind to go to Myanmar. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah. how. It was just very hard to get in with visas and everything. So the the most the easiest thing to do was just to go to Thailand in the meantime. Yeah. Most people think that I started in Muay Thai and then found Letwe. But Letwe I found out while I was in Canada a long time ago and I wanted to to go fight in Litwe, but it's just very hard to do. You know, the, the, the democracy was just starting and the country was just opening. But when I fought uh, in prison fight, the, the guys organizing the event, the Iranian and... and uh, and the promoter, and the Burmese, actually Burmese guy watching the fights. And uh, they said a couple of years later, they, were, they called me, they needed a guy to, to fight in Litwe. Wow. They, rem they, they remembered me, uh, one of the only guys that won that day, and it was a crazy fight. I had a talk with the prison warden afterwards, like he, 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 he was uh, very, very yes. happy. Yeah, he was impressed with the fight. So you had to earn your way into yeah. Litwe. You, yeah, you didn't just get to w walk in there and go, I'm gonna no, fight. You're not, you're not native to the country. Yeah. You're not, so yeah. yeah, you had to, to earn be invited. Respect. You have to be invited. Wow! Yeah, yeah. wow! That's the thing because if you, me and you, we go to Australia or UK yeah. right now, we can just sign up to a gym yeah, and go yeah, fight Muay Thai, fight kickboxing yeah. if we want to in a couple of months. But this is different. Like it, since it's a very secluded country, Myanmar, yeah. you have to be invited. And, like wow. there's papers and everything. Yeah. My record was really not up to to their level. Wow. Uh, they actually had to lie to to bulk it up yep. um, and uh, the, you know the word like I was supposed to be a sacrifice like just mm -hmm. let's bring this tall guy slim tall guy from Canada let's beat him up and it did not happen like they wanted to they threw you in the deep <laughs> end and you swam yeah, yeah. You go from uh, you go from the prison fight. You go over there. Yeah. What's your first fight? So like? first fight actually was it was for the title shot already in uh, in uh, seventy five kilogram. So uh, that was my my walking weight and uh, just like, okay cool. They don't have to cut weight. Let's fight. And they said that I had uh, to fight Tutu, who's uh, the, the seventy five kg champion. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we called him like as the welterweight uh, mm -hmm. champion, undefeated, never been knocked out. Um, and uh, I'm like okay, let's go. And he's uh, thirty six and thirty six and no, so thirty six wins, zero losses, and. Um, I trained for this fight and uh, I dominated him somehow. Like, I guess I had his number. I really had his number. He didn't, I didn't knock him out, but he was, 
it was it's, that was my first time like so you, really... this was the first time when you were using no gloves yes and were you, yeah. uh, were you did I you was, have fear yes i did i trained a, maybe a month or two before that i was starting i was starting to uh, to really uh, ramp up my my train but i was already training my knuckles for a long time because again that was my goal right yeah, so yeah, i was yeah. already training headbutts always training my my neck <laughs> I was training your uh, my knuckles, so I was already ready. But still, you're already you're still afraid. Like, okay, hitting the sand or hitting the, the bag, it's not the same as hitting a skull. You can't so, train yourself to get hit with bare knuckles, though, because you can't do that. Like true. you were talking about hitting, but yeah. what about your face? Yeah, I guess you you have it or you don't. Like some people get cut easy. I've I've trained with guys that are really like one little scrape accident, oh, and they're bloody. We have to end the training because they're bloody. I've never had that issue. Like uh, I guess I have a. A good skin that's a tough skin like a leather skin but um yeah you I, have to find that out though yeah you have, you to, have to find that out while getting in the ring yeah. so yeah. so you were a bit scared but you ended up like winning that fight yeah you know but it was it a draw it was a draw but, but like technically, were, this, this was the, this was very one-sided fight and yeah. uh yeah it was, it was disfigured completely lacerated uh, face puffed out face i had nothing uh, i managed to avoid all these punches and uh yeah. He was hitting the body a lot and stuff like yeah. And he basically uh, so the, that was the moment we got we got some bottles thrown in the ring after the fight because they didn't know who I was yet. They didn't know I was gonna. I so was they didn't a, accept you straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. And but I saw I looked at the videos. The, some Burmese were the older gentlemen, the elders were clapping like yeah. They were talking to each other like I like, yeah, this, I like this guy. Yeah. yeah. And I, I did my my uh, the traditional gesture of uh, honor, like uh, to challenge with honor and respect, you know. So they're like, okay, he's a pre, you know, because most fighters that go into Lightway, they don't do the the respect. They don't respect the culture. Yeah. So uh, they go with the, they make their symbol of Muay Thai. They do their, their traditional dance of Muay Thai. I did the traditional dance of Letway. Mm -hmm. You know, you show that you're trying to 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 do it. The same night, they gave me my my cash, uh, the most I ever made uh, in uh, at that time. Because in Thailand, you don't get paid a lot. It's nothing. And then I, they said, do you want to fight? Uh, you're like you're on fire, and you want to fight uh, the, the open weight champion. So I'm like. Another okay. champion. Yeah, yeah. You had a title fight, your first fight, yeah. and then your second fight, they want you to fight the open weight yeah. champion. Yeah, because they're like, because I was supposed to die in that first fight against Tutu, right? The the 75 kg guy, and also it's, it's their friends. So he didn't, he didn't. I don't think he liked that I I, I butchered his friend. So it's like. I want to like revenge my friend, you know, mm. and uh, yeah. Do you reckon it was well, actually, to after, do it? I actually have, after the end of fight, there's there's buses waiting at the end, at the exit of the stadium, yeah. right? There's big buses. Uh, like uh, I I'm going into my the foreigners uh, bus and he's going into uh, so so the other guy the open weight champion. Yeah. I actually say I said Tuntu Min. I knew who he was because I was watching his fight from a long time ago. Mm. Where he's actually a year younger than me, but I was I knew who he was and uh, I he doesn't speak a word of English. He won that night. He won by knockout. And I go to him, I said, like, uh, good fight. And he's like, mm. he doesn't understand what he said, good fight. But I, I, I looked in his eyes, and I, like, I knew I was going to fight him. And, and mm. we basically made, me and him, him and I, we made the biggest uh, trilogy in history of the, of the sport. Of 2,000 wow. years, we ended up making a, a, a history together. But wow. yeah, it was, uh, it was it's, yeah, it's intense. So, so after, after that, I fought him, and um, yeah, the rest is history. I so won you fought the open weight title. Did you win that as well? It was a draw. Oh, so it was I a draw. You cannot win by draw. So you go fight. Now you're going to fight the 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 open yeah. weight champion. Yeah. So he has to defend his title against yeah. you, and like, so this you don't technically win because you have to win by a very specific set of standards. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it was a draw. You actually like. It was the hardest fight to this day. It was that was my hardest fight. He, the first two two round and a half, he really got me. He got he knocked me out for a second. I dropped and I got back right away. So people don't know to this day that I was actually I saw stars, but I did. I never lost consciousness. I just like fell down and I saw and I got up right away. Whoop! So the referee didn't even count it as a knockdown because it, I got up so fast. So quick. Yeah, that's that's the thing. But like, I remember. Okay, now I I jump in survival mode right away. For me, you don't hear nothing else than a, ee, the crowd. Even they're screaming as loud as you don't hear nothing. You just it's him. This guy wants to he wants to finish you, and like now it's like survival. So he, he smells pushes, blood yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. And then He's a shark with blood. Yeah. 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 So uh, now it's about making sure you don't get another one. And. Uh, but yeah, it, it was intense. So he got me, he got me with this shot. Um, he got me with, with some kicks, sweeps, and he basically 
I had to make adapt. I had to adapt. Otherwise, it was not going to be good for me. And I ended up winning the the rest of the fight. So I think my cardio and my um, my uh, adaptiveness went through at the end of the fight. So it was a that was actually a real draw. Like I could say like this was a real draw. Okay. It's the only real draw of all of my fights. The other ones are, are domination draw for me. This was a real draw because he won the first part. I won the the last part. Um, but then that wasn't enough. So since it was such a draw, and I ended up on, I finished on top with you know some drops. Now it was an automatic rematch two months later. Oh god, two months! <laughs> yeah. So they made you fight the same guy again. Same guy. So again. It's the hardest fight you've ever had. Yeah. And they want you to fight again. Yeah, I was. So they're I really was, testing was, you at this yeah. point. They're, they're like, we didn't die the first fight. Let's make sure we finish him. You know, like, yeah. And uh, it ended up, it ended up being uh, two days before my my birthday. So, uh, and I wasn't. I said, let's get married. Let's get, uh, I, I, engaged, I, I got engaged with Irina in Myanmar. Make the, makes the news in Myanmar wow. all around because we got engaged on a pagoda in uh, Bagan, a beautiful spot in, in Myanmar if you guys can go. And then they're like, well, do you want to get married under traditional Burmese uh, settings, and Burmese clothing? I'm like, yeah. So the date is set, set for 13th of December, 2016, the f- the, for, the, for the wedding, but my fight is on the 11th, so two days prior. This fight is is like sweetened with the actual golden belt, like this 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 uh, you know very ancient title that if you win this belt you're the best in Litwe in Myanmar in the world and you basically uh, yeah it's the, it's the title so I have to win this fight for my for Irina I have to win this fight for my future for everything and uh, I know that I'm still recuperating from my from the first fight he, he, he basically uh, really hurt my leg I'm still limping I'm still uh, uh, you know, I'm still sore from the fight. It was very, it's like I, I, I was hit by a train. Like, that was my, my real initiation to, uh, to Letwe. That's the Burmese boys. The you know, lineage of lineage of grandfather being champion, learning headbutts from a young age. Like I was playing Lego at 13. He was headbutting dudes at 13. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I, 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 like I was not the same child. Like it's two different childhoods, like completely. His father was a Burmese champion. His grandfather was a Burmese champion. Wow. You know, like my grandfather was making paper cups at a factory. My dad was, you know, we're, we're not the same life at all. But somehow we met 20, I don't know how many miles away, kilometers away in Burma, Myanmar, to fight for an ancient title. And I got the best of him. So it's very, very, uh, it's very crazy. So I guess my trauma, my childhood traumas were were, were good enough to, to make it happen. <laughs> That's absolutely crazy, bro. So... You got the best of him. Yeah. You won by a knockout. Yeah, I won by. I, I basically like cut him a lot by elbows. He was bleeding, and uh, he was. Uh, he threw a kick, and I caught his kick, and I threw him on the floor, and he, he uh, broke his leg. He really broke his knee on, on the on the way down, and then he tried to. He took his two minute timeout because we didn't talk about this, but there's also a two minute break, right? There's a two minute. Yeah, the, the two so minute it gives the opportunity yeah. to recover. Exactly. So he got his two minute, and like he came back. And he's, I see he's limping. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to really finish this leg. And that's, you know, so I'm asking my corner, which, which leg is it? And he's like, right leg. I'm like, okay. So I'm trying to aim for the right leg. He's, blo- he's protecting it well. And then we're in the clinch. I do another throw and he can get up afterwards. Wow. He's done. And we have actually a footage of this, like uh, the Canyon, Canyon TV was filming it. And he's like bleeding on the camera like and uh, he's saying like he's crying to his corner he's like I can't get up I'm wow. done and uh, he's crying because he's like he's losing the title and it was very uh, one of the most intense moments of my life uh, and then they give you a flag in Myanmar it's a flag uh, like the flag ceremony you break the reign of the other champion and you, you basically start your, your reign you start your, your new champion wow. so how does that feel tell us the, the, <laughs> break, tell us how it feels it's intense it's the most intense uh, moment there was the crowd screaming, and at that time, it's my third fight, so they're more accepting of me. I'm, my page, my Facebook page is blowing up. Burmese people, they see me dressed in traditional clothing. They love me. They, so I'm like, they're already, like, it's like separated. Some people, they, they want uh, Tuntu Min to win, but some people are happy there's a new wave, and I'm going to be able to bring the sport to new heights, right? I'm already, even before this fight, I was already bringing new articles, and, and uh, I'm, speak, I'm speaking English, so it's easier to, to, to popularize. You know? Mm-hmm. You know, before that, for you know, many years, there was no way 
to bring it out, yeah, exactly. out of the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was getting a lot of fans uh, over the, leading up to this fight. Uh, the entire country, watched, I think it was like over 10 million people that watched that fight. Uh, and uh, 10 million? Yeah, it was <laughs> 13 million, 15 million, I don't know. What? Yeah, yeah it, it's really intense. And then basically I, I break that flag and that like that's like the moment. Symbolic. Of, yeah, symbolic moment of like you you break him, you break his reign and you're the champ. Wow, devastating for him. Yeah. What a moment yeah. for you. Yeah. Because uh, that's uh, an underdog. I, I got, yeah, exactly. And I got a cut from uh, the, one of the rare cut I had in my fights. I don't know, I, I think it was a punch. And I, you see it on my wedding pictures two days later. I have, I have my stitches. I'm, I don't know a lot of guys that get married with stitches on their face, you know? So, <laughs> you, you win this fight and then you get married? Yeah. And the, that's and, another and story in itself. The wedding. <laughs> Tell the people about your crazy <laughs> wedding. Just, just quickly, come on. Go on, just tell. Yeah. So you're the ch new champion. Yeah. yeah. And then you're getting married. Yeah. So we barely have time to, like, we have to do a rehearsal the next day of the fight. Thankfully, I'm not too banged up, apart from the cut and stuff. But I don't know, nobody can make it to the wedding. My parents came, her parents, my Irina's parents can't make it. Nobody can make it. So it's only strangers, 100 people in the wedding. All TV execs, uh, like like millionaires, uh, gold mine owners, like there's a lot of people that this is the change and it's a change, a pivotal moment in Burmese like sports sporting history because you have a foreign champion becoming you know the the first the first foreigner to become a champion in the sport. So they're inviting all these people. The deal was we're gonna make it broadcast it live, but you don't have to pay anything for it. So I'm like I'm saying I don't well, on TV. It. Yeah. So there was BBC, uh, it was like TV cameras everywhere, cameras. I, I, I'm like, I would look at Irina, like, what, we, what is happening? We're dressed up and, and like, they lend us the suits, right? And it's, it's diamonds and basically uh, there's nobody that we know. We get, we get gifted a microwave, furniture, uh, money. I don't know anybody. They're just gifting all these things. So you're getting those wedding gifts. Yeah. They're televising your yeah. wedding to Live how many people? Well, that's the that's the thing is 30 million people watched it allegedly. <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> 30 yeah. million people watched your yeah. wedding after you became champion. It's insane, yeah. Of, well, it, was, that. it was like a, on MRTV, like the biggest channel in Myanmar. Like in huts, people have that in like remote locations in Myanmar. People can have that channel and we're watching it on, on their... So to this day, when we, you know, we have people looking we had their, they have our wedding picture on their on the screensaver in Myanmar wow, so we're like just you know it's interesting so it was I think it was a moment the fact also that we're marrying in their culture in their mm -hmm. traditional it's really and we really liked it we were like happy to get married in their yeah. uh, you know like it was like a thank you you're changing our life we're showing appreciation so I think they were very happy and uh, never happened before at that level at that level of, of eyes so they have us on the screen saver. What a story, bro. Like, that's yeah. another level. We didn't keep anything of the gifts except the money because we're not, at the time, I'm still transitioning from Thailand to Myanmar, right? Yeah. To live. So uh, we gave the we gave all the, all the gifts to the, the cleaning ladies. Oh, wow. Nice <laughs> they, were, they were they were happy. They were happy, crazy. That is a crazy story, man. Like, yeah. what a underdog story. And it, it's like, you bring a new meaning to going viral. From, like, not being... Like not being known at all. Like I have, I think five thousand followers. But on this all happened in a space of how long? Like from your first, so fight, first fight, the rematch to the you, open. You, you want to laugh? It's August to December. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so in four months, yeah. you went mega viral yeah. and become champ. And then I was able to to basically you know get a new apartment and give a better life. Because before that, bro, I forgot to say, but before uh, all these things, right? I was crying with Irina. She was crying, and she made me cry because she's like. We don't have enough. We're not making enough. Like you know, we were making two hundred dollars per fights. You know, yeah. it was like, if we want kids one day, what we're we gonna do. I'm like, wow, I don't know what I'm gonna do because that's all like I'm doing right now. Like and um, yeah, so I guess we made it happen, and it was very, very uh, blood, sweat, and tears, literally. Wow. You had to put a lot on the line there, so it wasn't like yeah. easy, but uh, it paid off. That's yeah. for sure. So now I want to get to like how. Because obviously your fight career evolves and you have more fights and there's yeah. a lot of things that happen along that journey. Yeah. But like, how do you go from this brutal world champion fighter to a vegan? Like, tell us yeah. that story. I'm still a fighter with vegan, right? Like, yeah. exactly. Um, so I guess, I guess it's important to say for me personally, from that moment, you know, we went fighting like I think three fights in Tokyo. Uh, it was really like charged up year, mm -hmm. fought in Myanmar again. This time, the fact that I was able to live solely from my fighting, 
my life was, was just consisting of training, sleeping, and eating, right? It was pretty much it. And I do believe these times was when I had the biggest, deepest conversation with my wife. Uh, at the time was my, uh, my, my, I guess my girlfriend at the time. We were basically just uh, talking a lot. And that, that's what make, we deepen, deepen our, our values about their meaning of life and like all this and that, which led us a couple of years later to, um, to, to deep, in, deep, deep conversation about, about compassion and about how we want our life to be. So I think it's possible for everybody to, to come to this realization, but I think they need to really do some retrospective. I did a lot of uh, analyzing. At the time, I didn't even know what was my trauma. It's like, you know, like, why do I like to argue? Why do I like to, why do I like pain? Why do I like this? And like, we just talked a lot about like, what hurt us when we were a child. And I do believe that everything in our life is played from a young age. What I'm saying is that I think it's important to realize who we are, you know, love who we are. I don't think I loved myself very much prior to this conversation and prior to all this. Um, I, you need to love yourself before you can love somebody else, right? How can you love animals that are, you know, independent of you, that are, that are sainted other animals if you don't even love yourself? It's very hard to love somebody if you don't love yourself. So that was the first step. I think it's a very big point here, right? Um, to, to, uh, to love yourself and um, if you're not I feel like it's very hard to be in a good place because I feel like caring about sainted animals because that's a good thing you want to make good in the world in order to do good in the world you have to want to do good in order to want to do good you want you need to, to be in a good place and if you're not in a good place if you don't love yourself I'm sure there's uh, depressed guys and girls in the world that are vegan they don't either not there but the point is generally speaking you need to be in a good place mentally in order to be to do good in my book. I don't know if you agree with me. Well, I can say that I went vegan right, yeah. after I got out of prison, become sober, and started to. Th that, that was true for me. Yeah. Like I started thinking, I don't want to hurt people anymore. What am I doing? Am I a hypocrite? Oh my god, I don't want to hurt these animals. But but before then, I had so much going on. Mm. I hated myself, and I was in gangs, and I was on the drugs, and I had no time to think about animals. True. You know, even if someone, even if maybe if someone brought it to me one day, maybe. Mm -hmm. but, but I really, I, I was too busy fending for myself. And I, yeah. you're right. So you're right for me, but yeah. I don't know. If it's but true you have me. a good point. You're busy also, right? If let's say you're 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 a lot of people that are generally good inside, and I think they're under. They could be very. Uh, Germany like uh, good and they can become vegan but maybe they're so busy right now uh, with their financial issues or maybe they're they're, they're hard uh, working and they they have they're barely surviving when do they have time to think about moral proud so it's very I, I really am um, sympathizing with, with these people but tell me specifically what was the catalyst yeah. for you because you you said that you had to be in this certain state yeah. you had to be in this emotional state introspection so it happened at this point but did something come along when you were in this state that gave you the trigger okay so so Irina was actually it was a very I guess we could call it selfish because it was only for health at first she was like oh let's let's stop eating meat I want to become a vegetarian and I didn't even know what it was I didn't know the difference between a vegan and a vegetarian and I'm like no I'm a fighter I need to eat meat right I remember like it's yesterday she was eating like vegetarian rice or something and I was making a point in chicken I was I feel like shit it's not nowadays but you know I didn't know um, and with my bad influence I made her stop and she being, came back to the dark side, I call it. And uh, so uh, on the immu uh, animal abuser side, together we basically continued for a few years. Uh, what made, because uh, I, I, I guess I was busy forging my philosophy of life. It made me even think like, why am I fighting? You know, like uh, why I was, I was really like analyzing life. Now the next big thing was the, bi the biggest elephant in the room was, so what is, what is happening with, with, uh, with, you know, my diet and my, uh, my way of life? The big thing was, um, shout out to, to James uh, with uh, the, the Game Changers. That's, that started, yeah. So uh, Jamie Wilkes, uh, the producer of Game Changers, the movie. We watched it on uh, a New Year's Eve, I think 2019. Uh, that was my New Year's Eve. We, wait, we watched it, um, and uh, at that moment, I was like, oh, okay, so I'm not, I'm not optimal as, a, as an athlete. Again, I guess I would say it was, it was more like diet, right, at mm -hmm. first. But not long after that, I, I think I saw your videos, and I saw a lot of, I researched a lot of stuff, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I'm already on the good side of history, and right I'm already on the good side for my health, but... but what you're doing is way bigger than, than you thought. It's not just for uh, you know, for, for your veins and my arteries. And you're actually like 
on, uh, you're doing it, an ethical choice and a very good thing for humanity. I'm like, wow, and, and the animal kingdom. I'm like, and then I, I became a, an extremist in that, in that part. I'm like, this is, this, is, this is what I need to do. This is the good thing. So I guess I'm lucky. Uh, I think no good way, there's, no, there's not one way to become vegan, right? Like, looking back, I'm like, really, Dave, you, you became vegan just because of, of for health? I feel like it's not good, you know, but the, the, you know, the, the reality is... Uh, as long as, you, as long as you do it, that's what matters. Yeah, I well, you know, like a lot of people don't know about me, but my, I say my story a lot, but I was uh, doing the green juices uh, for weight loss first. Okay, okay. And it was when I understood that plants were good for you, then I, uh, the message of the animals sort of flourished easier. Okay. So, like, when you're not eating meat, you're less likely to double down on okay. wanting to keep, you know, you don't, maybe you don't want to hear about the animal's story when you're eating them because you're sure. more likely to be defensive and sure. defend what you're doing. So the message goes easier. Uh, if you stop yeah. for, say, you eat plant-based diet for health and then you see something about animals, well, you don't have to defend it because you're not eating it. Yeah, because the, defend, the defense uh, makes it harder to, to, yeah, get the message across, you're yeah, right. Yeah. So the fact that I was not, I was not participating in it made, it made it made me feel good. Because I can see how if you're getting, I, I would feel attacked, let's say. If, I, if I'm hearing an ethical message and I'm contributing to it, I would feel attacked. I would start defending it, yeah. So I guess I was more prone to hearing that, that uh, beautiful message of uh, veganism because I was not, uh, I, I was uh, plant-based, I guess, right? Wow, yeah, I was, uh, looking back, it's, uh, it changed my life, it changed my life. Um, I, I do think it's the, it's the base from human, me- human bettering. You know, like uh, Leo Tolstoy said, there's always going to be battlefield as long as there's going to be slaughterhouses. And this makes more sense day by day because I feel like it's, it's just aggression and death and wars and everything. How can we be kind to animals if we're not kind to each other? Like, you know, there's wars happening. Like, if we're not kind to your neighbors, how can we be kind to an innocent person, our own, you know, our own species? How can we be kind to each other if we're killing and eating animals? Exactly. You know? Oh, good point. The other way around, too. Exactly. So the basis well, is... It is yeah, the other way around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, like, if you think about this as well, like, yes, speciesism. Like, think of discrimination. You know, because yeah. what you're saying here is it's betterment of humanity, and I agree with you yeah. as well. Because, like, we look at animals and we say this animal deserves a knife in the throat because they're from this species. This animal they deserve love and care mm-hmm. because they're from this species. Mm-hmm. So then we look at each other and we go, yeah, we can disregard those people because they're from this race or gender or sexuality or whatever or this country yeah. or this culture. And these ones here, you know, we can... so that this discrimination and lowering yeah. of people. You know, like some. You see, wars are always preceded by some dictator going to that country, or they're just a bunch of rats, or they're dogs, or they're pigs, you know, and they lower them down to like a species, and then they attack, it makes it easier to attack people if you dehumanize them to animals. But if we had animals raised up, you know, you could never dehumanize someone to an animal because we already lift animals up, you know, so. Well well, well said, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So as long as we're gonna have, uh, you know, slaughterhouses, we're gonna have battlefields, and, and it's, it's really, yeah. a, really a big point. It is. It is. It is. It's, it's true. Like, uh, how how can we have a peace with each other while there is a slaughterhouse in every single town? And I've never been personally yet uh, to a slaughterhouse. You've seen, and uh, the way you describe it is is one of the most demonic place you can ever see on earth. It's. it's how does it make you feel to, to to know that it's still happening to this day? These 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 places what hits me the most is how it makes the animals feel and uh it's the te- it's terror it's okay. terror and it's horror and it's uh the fear there's no way out for them and they can't defend themselves so they're in a situation Powerless. there's blood everywhere and they know they're gonna die and it's just adrenaline and fear and please help me and then they get you know decapitated so it is, it is the epitome of terror and horror and uh Human beings they, uh, commit some of the worst crimes against the most vulnerable, which is an uh, indictment on. I feel like anybody with, with a, a little semblance of compassion would see that and, uh, and, and be like, I'm against that, right? And that's the reason why the, whatever the industry, they, right, uh, the, the, the oligarchs of the world are trying to remove this from our view and that's you know that's why that's what basically became made me like from plant-based to vegan is seeing these these things and hearing like uh, earthlings and watching earthlings uh, uh, we cried watching this and like why are we not showing that i know why because 
this is bad for money. Mm -hmm. And uh, you Google get dairy cow, and right now you see a dairy cow, it's green pasture, it's, 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 we're being lied to. And by the way, that's the one aspect of the, the, the world that's corruption everywhere, lies everywhere. This, and once you realize that we're being lied to in most spheres of our life, Eating uh, dead animals is making us sick. Uh, you know, they can sell us meds for that, so big pharma is involved. It's just, yeah, it's very, uh, it's, it's not a good thing. It's, it's interconnected, yeah. and um, what I don't get is where people think, you know, yeah, big pharma's lying to us, yeah, the war machine's lying to us, the government's lying to us, but, you know, the meat industry definitely ain't lying to us. No, of course not. <laughs> they yeah. don't give us propaganda. <laughs> you know, yeah. bacon's a health food. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. So, like, from your perspective as, like, someone who, like, you walk around the street, you can beat up 99% of the people <laughs> on the street. Well, it's almost like 100% most of the time. Men with the, with the, the male-type energy will be like, you know, yeah, meat is manly, mm. you know, eating meat and, like, you know, Biggest meat, vegans are pussies and this and that. Like, what do you think about that whole stereotype? The thing is, like, manly... Man, like we, we, we that we have in our mind, a lot of guys uh, think that that being compassionate is a sign of weakness. Even in Russia, my my wife is Russian. She said, um, I think the translation is like, if you laugh, if you smile a lot, you're stupid, you know, and you're or like stupid, you're 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 uh, innocent and you're easily fooled, and it's like a sign of weakness, right? And I think that's why a lot of I think it's easier for girls to 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 go in on the on the vegan side because they're closer. They, they have that maternal instinct and they can realize, oh my God, this is sad. So, um, you know, even me and me even me telling you that like I shed a tear watching Earthlings. It's not something that we would have heard 50 years ago. You know, mans don't cry. You know, right? But I think like I think that's the, actually the, the least manly thing you can do is to to pretend this that this cocoon of man. It's Basically, we're breaking down like this this stigma of uh, what is a real man. A real man is not a is not afraid to show his emotion. In, in, in the opposite, it's like I'm owning all these emotions. I control them, and I'm able to. Uh, I'm not just. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not. Uh, um, so, compassion is easier, I believe, with people that are have less uh, reserve or they're less. Um, afraid to show their emotion. And I think that, again, in the fighting world and uh, whatever sporting world, it's looked as a weakness to, to, be, to, be, to be emotional, therefore to be, to be compassionate, therefore they pretend they think they're weak. It's very, it's very uh, it makes a lot of sense to me uh, that fighters or other people think you're not strong if, you're, uh, if you care about animals, like, you know? So I guess I'm breaking down that, that, that little stigma. So let me throw this one at you then. <laughs> because isn't there a huge contradiction there? Because it's not the same if it's children or they're protecting other vulnerable human beings, women, um, or dogs. Then it's okay to protect them. Yeah. But it's pigs, cows, chickens, fish that it's not okay to, sh to protect yeah. and show... Compassion. Good point. I think there's, there's, it's a very complex issue. It's the fact that we've been indoctrinated from a young age. And I was giving uh, cups of milk at school, right? To, to, to basically, it's grooming. You know, it's illegal to do that for cigarettes. They do that with the milk industry, the dairy industry. Yeah. Uh, they're grooming us. They're, they're, they're telling us it's okay. Uh, publicity from a young age. So you have that aspect. You have that aspect of grooming from a uh, the grooming um, uh, customers from a, from a young age. And... Um, I think the lack of education on what is real health. If you tell me back in the days, if you told me today, what is, uh, you know, where do you get protein? I would have said, you know, uh, animals or meat, right? Um, well, that's not where protein comes from. All protein comes from from plants. Uh, that's where animals get their protein from. So it, we're just we don't know. And you go, I think so. I saw somebody in the street saying, um, you know, where where do you get your calcium? You know, people said milk. Like calcium doesn't come from milk, guys. Like, calcium comes from plants and you know, leafy greens and uh, so. Lack of education, grooming from, from industry leaders, and uh, this creates a philosophy, creates a mindset in, in men, and it's that we need to eat animals to, to be strong. And uh, this is my biggest battle. This is my biggest battle. The reason why I started VTRIBE, I want to make sure that like fighter, fighters and, and men, uh, they, 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 we break that, that barrier, that mindset that we need to kill animals to be, to be strong. Yeah, we need to eat meat. Meat for yeah. strength. I even, I even hate the word meat because meat is like, it's, you know, it's putting a word on dead animal flesh. Yeah. That's what it is, right? It's a muscle. It's a muscle of it's an animal. It's a euphemism, yeah. that word. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I try to use these words like in a, 
uh, you know, like mammal milk, and you know, like uh, it's like it's not, like you call it milk, or it's like dairy from a cow. It's, it's like it's. It, I think we use you said it very well. Like it's not uh, it's not uh, pork, right? It's it's pig. It's yeah. it's not beef. It's it's, it's, a, cow. it's a, cow. a cow. Yeah, exactly. It's a dead cow. Yeah, yeah. So uh, humanizing or you know putting an individual back into the into the object. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting issue, the, the male issue, because uh, you're right, women are more yielding to the message. There's less stigma for a woman. They talk about their emotions. It's okay for a woman to cry, yada, yada. Men have to double down. They have to be men. It's for men. You know, it's, uh, you know that, oh, yeah, we don't, I don't have to care about them animals. I do what I want. Yeah. I can, you know, they also have to have this false bravado in front of uh, their other mates and yeah. stuff. And it's, uh, do you, so do you think there's a, there's a weakness in, in that? There's a, there's a lack of strength in people not not sort of yeah. uh, going against the crowd and wanting to impress Very them. good point. I think that's one of the, I, I think a lot of people would like to, to do it. I've seen some people go on like on social media and say like, hey, I'd like to go vegan and they get like trashed by people. And I think a lot of people are, are because again, that's another problem. Society tells you that to be non-confrontational, non be liked by everybody, you know, like we need to be liked by everybody. It's so bad to have some people that disagrees with you and everything. Like this is something again, that goes back to what I told you earlier. During my, my, my career, I started to have lovers and haters. So that was my first time having massive haters, death threats. And so that, makes me re that made me okay with not being liked by everybody. Yeah. And if you're okay with not being liked by everybody, and you realize that at the end of the day, if you go in the, in the hospital tomorrow, who's going to come see you? A handful of people, right? So it makes, it makes you realize that you don't care, you, don't, you shouldn't care what people think of you. So therefore, it may, it sh you shouldn't care what people think of your diet or of your, of your philosophy, your life philosophy, because it's not a diet. You know, veganism is a life philosophy. So you shouldn't, you shouldn't care what like uh, Aunt uh, Michelle tells you at, at Christmas dinner or that, you know, that, you, oh, you're vegan? Yes, you have a problem with that? You know, like, uh, or, or Uncle Bob that loves, uh, loves to go hunt and he's like, uh, oh, so you, oh, you're eating those plants? Yeah, you have a problem, Bob? You have a problem? Yeah. Why do you care what yeah. Uncle Bob yeah. thinks, mate? God, <laughs> Uncle Bob, mate, get rid of that beer gut, then come yeah. talk to me. It's something that we're not told. They're, they're lying to us about, about this because they want to keep these industries afloat. And, the, and I'm beyond insulted that they're subsidizing these industries uh, by the millions, you know, to, to, to keep them afloat. We would already have full-blown, uh, you know, plant-based industries with, with almonds and soy, and, and we would have all this if the government would help, they would help a little, even the percentage of what they're helping to the dairy and, and the animal industry, right? It makes sense. Yeah. They subsidize factory farms and like animal left agriculture, and right. fishing industry, billions and billions. Billions. Yeah. They just need to remove those subsidies and put it into plant-based yeah. alternatives. Because so we'll, people ask you, how, how are we going to change these industries uh, to plant-based? Like, guys, just stop funding them. Mm -hmm. Like, if we stop funding them with our dollars and the, oh my God, it's, it's a very flawed system and a corrupt system. They're, they're shooting ads to people so we keep voting with our dollars, and then there's also subsidizing. So it's just like a vicious circle of like keeping the, the, the society in a, in, a, in, a, in a darkness so we don't know what's happening. Slowly people are getting awake or awakening and they're like, oh my God, we're being lied to. Uh, I, don't, I know it's, it's, it's very, uh, it's happening, and uh, I think it's exponential right now with, with uh, what's happening in the recent years. We see that, you know, there's always been corruption, always been lies, um, and like you said, it's all tied to, it's all tied to, to this. I became vegan at, uh, what, 28, 20, 27? So I was lied to, and I put dead animals in my body. I contributed to countless amount of, of uh, you know, deaths, without even knowing it. Like, I was not a bad person inside of me. Like, people watching this, they're not, they're not vegan, or friends and family that are not vegan. They're not bad people. We just don't know. We just don't know, you know? I was not educated enough. We're tricked. Yes, like, that's the we're word. tricked into doing something against, you know, our nature. Because a lot, a lot of people still are being tricked now. They're tricked by the propaganda. They don't want to believe the vegan animal rights activists because they think we're biased, not yeah. forget, forgetting that the industry is the most financially biased machine that you're ever going to see, yeah. you know, and there's a massive war going on, and the war is for your consumer habits to bring money in. Say that again, there's a war yeah. to, to have your consumer habits, that's well said. Yeah. So yeah. they're fighting for your dollars, they're fighting to get, to get you to buy their brands, basically. Yeah. They're, they're wow. salespeople. It's... The meat industry is a bit like, people think that, that farmers aren't business owners. 
It's a commodity. The, animals is a commodity. It's, a, it's most a, it's of the animals are factory farm from factory farmers. <laughs> they're, they're just trying to sell a product. Yeah. So, so they're it's trying, to, and you're the customer. So we're not trying to sell you anything right now. We just want people to be vegan, and yeah. you know, and people like Dave, you know, you, you, you're angry at the state of the world. So, what the next uh, uh, question for you would be like, what are you planning on doing mm-hmm. about it? Because it seems like, uh, you know, yeah, you've been you've been a fighter for ten years, and. Uh, like, has your life changed since you've changed your philosophy, your mm-hmm. outlook on the world, and, and what what now? What's the journey ahead look like? And now, we're, now I'm getting angry uh, because, yeah, it makes me think how uh, a big war, a big battle we have in front of us. And I, see, I say that because it, it, we, we, we tend to to put down this, this atrocious thing. I, I, like I said, I've never been to a slaughterhouse yet, but we can understand the atrocities that are happening there. So for me, it, it's, it's mass murder on the daily. And, and, and like... If, if, if you're compassionate, if you, if you put yourself in the victims, like you said it very well, and I'm, I'm stealing words from you, you put yourself on the victim's perspective, well, ish, it, it's, it's, a, it's a genocide. I want to thank you for, for inspiring me uh, with all your, you've been like, since, my, since becoming ger- vegan, you, you, you were like really, uh, I was watching your videos and, and uh, you, you inspired me to, to become the activist that I, that I am, that I want to be even more. So there's a lot of big things on the horizon right now. I, I, uh, I started like, again, V-Tribe, but right now it's, we, we got a, gathered a, a good uh, social media uh, on, online, but phase two is to really bring it to the next level. Um, I don't want to say anything about my career, but like, un- understandably, you can see that like my philosophy of life has brought me to a place where fighting for entertainment, I love it for me. I would do it for free. I would do it if there's nobody watching. Okay, but it's like bread and games. Give them bread. Give the society bread and games while there's bad things happening. So I almost feel like, like a, no, I don't, I don't almost, I know there's a bigger battle to be fought. And I'm putting this, these words, I'm a fighter, I want to fight the bigger fight. And the bigger fight, I want to dedicate my life, and I think it, it got covered quickly on that plant-based news uh, a couple years ago. Uh, like, this is my life mission. My wife and I, we make this animal rights our, our, our life mission. And uh, phase two of, of E-Tribe is to, to uh, I don't want to go too much in detail, is to, to uh, yeah, we want to we wanna do something really, really cool for, to educate the, the, the world um, and to, uh, to, to make sure that people are, are not blinded on what's happening in the, in, all around the world. In Turkey here, uh, in my birth country of Canada, it's, it's really, uh, it's really uh, our, our main focus. So in the next uh, few, few months, year people are going to start to see uh, what we're going to do and uh, i'm excited and hopefully you can uh, you can witness this and i want to say again thank you for 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 being such a good a mentor we, unwillingly you were mentored to me in my journey as a vegan cheers my brother <laughs> that sounds very uh mysterious and interesting and uh inspiring brother and uh thank you for those kind words and uh, yeah, feel your passion i think this is a good place to end this interview yeah. it's been great bro but it, is there anything you want to say if anyone's watching the male audience or any any audience member who's watching yeah. that you want to you want to leave them with some words? You don't need animal meat. You need protein, and protein is not found only in uh, in the, what you think it is. What we've been told it is it is found in uh, plants. I eat like a king, uh, and uh, you know I eat. Amazing diverse, diversity of food. I have never felt stronger <laughs> and better mentally because I don't feel I don't. I'm not contributing to to uh, this negativity, and I feel like a new man. I feel re- renewed because I, almost like lighter, uh, knowing what I know now. You feel way better uh, knowing that you know. Because again, in, in movies and superheroes, you don't see superheroes killing the innocent ones. You see superheroes protecting the innocent ones. So I want to be a superhero. You can be a superhero. As simple, as simple as just avoiding these these uh, atrocious things, and they make it look very uh, inoffensive with nice packaging, nice stuff. But at the end of the day, guys, this was an individual. This was somebody that didn't want to die. Probably had a family. Even if you're hunting, you know. Deers, they have family, they have kids, they have a, a partner. You can make a simple choice. I did. I think I was in the, the three steps of truth, right? First one is violent opposition. Then it's ridicule. 
and then it's acceptance. Well, you can switch those first two, you know, ridicule first, I joke about, you know, this person that's vegan, and the second, I'm violently opposed. But eventually, that means that I'm on the path to truth, and the truth is, you don't need animals to be strong. We train like, like animals, we train like crazy uh, right now, lifting weights, running on a plant-based diet, uh, and uh, you're gonna feel great, you're gonna feel great mentally and physically, and I wish, I wish, uh, uh, I think, you know, at the end of the day, the goal is to, to uh, it's, it's, it's for the animals we have to, to give a voice to the voiceless. Cheers, my brother. Thank you. <laughs>